Okay, hello. Let's begin this event. So uh, let me start presenting my, my screen. Okay, my desktop. So uh, in this session, I'll present some some part of ethical hacking course. Uh, just for you to understand, this course is called Ethical Hacking and Countermeasures. So we're gonna learn about different attack types and also countermeasures like uh, software restriction policies or Microsoft Emmet, uh, attacks like sniffing, uh, spoofing, uh, SQL injection attack, and so on. Uh, just let me begin this presentation from, okay, from some, quick, some exercise, which is not really, say, one big exercise, not even number one. This is exercise number zero. Uh, I found some USB stick and uh, just wondering what's inside. I want to see what's inside, so let me check it. I'm just inserting this USB stick into my PC. Uh, let me open my physical machine. It's not going to be in virtual environment, so just on physical machine. This PC, okay, I see my app drive, okay, that's cool. Probably some documents. I'm going to open and see uh, some document, some document probably, uh, yeah, 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 nothing really interesting, maybe this, oh, wow. what's that? Okay, you probably know what's that, this is CV Locker Virus, uh, which say has encrypted my files, okay? Um, <laughs> okay, my files are safe, so let me close it and just show you what's that. Uh, can anyone please tell me, is this file any different from other documents? Just type in or unmute your microphone and tell me if this is something different or not. Yes, it's application, it's not Word document. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. it's application. Let me hide this view and just give a list. Can you, differ, can you say what's different now? No, of course not. If you see, if you think that uh, extensions are hidden, no, file extensions are not hidden. So this is for real. This is the real document, and this is real extension. Except maybe for this one, this is not for real. Okay. Uh, to prove this, let me rename this document. Right click, rename, and you see that the system offers me to rename this part, which is the name and leaves uh, this extension docx. Okay, this one as well, quite the same. And now this is something completely different. Rename. Do you see where xz part is? And this is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I wonder <laughs> the funny way it works. Yeah. So let me explain you how to prepare such a, an executable. To do this, I'll use Ruby language. Uh, so I have Metasploit installed on my machine. Do you see it? Because uh, just in case uh, I'm talking too fast, just tell me, okay? So I'm not gonna be not gonna be as quick. I want you to understand the exercise. So I have Metasploit installed on my machine. Uh, I have Ruby language compiler on this machine. So I also have some virus.exe uh, prepared on my machine. And this one, this one is my virus.exe. And this is for real. This is, say, some virus. Uh, but I will call Ruby language compiler to prepare some tricky part. Okay? So this is going to be a command like, like Ruby uh, execute. And the command is file dot rename uh, rename this virus dot exe into something interesting so this is going to be unicode symbol like this one mm, and now i'm typing this name from the right to the left i want to type in doc x okay xcod dot you see where is this extension like okay um okay just letter by letter character by character and this is gonna be like trooper 
report. This is report, okay? Uh, executive report. UTIF and now we're exe extension hides. And again, Unicode symbol and this 2020D. keyboard probably <laughs> okay, now it's done it's done I have remained the uh, rename this executable and now let's check how it looks like in Explorer and this is how it looks like in Windows Explorer again yeah, this still application but do you think your users will recognize this of course not of course not <laughs> Just look at this, uh, and this, this, USB stick. Uh, and this is funny, but it hides this executable. So, uh, in this course, uh, we're gonna play with such tricks. Uh, and say the course will contain maybe one day of talking where, where I explain the matter of things. And uh, say 80% of time, we're gonna hack. We're gonna compile viruses, we're gonna compile such tricky viruses, yeah, and sniff an attack like this one. So, do you like this exercise? The first exercise is done. Now, okay, you may ask me about countermeasures because this course has uh, called hacking and countermeasures. So, if you ever heard of software restriction policies, I will enable software restriction policies on my machine. And now let me check if I can launch this executable. Oh no, I cannot launch this executable anymore because I'm protected. So we're gonna talk about this uh, type of protection as well. So, okay, if you have any question on um, this exercise, just ask, if not, we continue to the next exercise, okay? So what's next? Next, um, I will move to Kali Linux and we, we're going to perform a lot of exercise with Kali, uh, especially for spoofing and the different type of spoofing and sniffing is going to be Kali because it comes with pre-compiled set of tools. So okay, I'm logging on as root. I have prepared quite a few command prompts because I'm going to launch several executables and commands uh, at a time. Uh, and this is going to be my victim. This victim is, as you probably can see, this is Windows 8.1, just as is. Just for instance, uh, for that attack on my physical machine, uh, my physical machine also is Windows 8.1, so it's not any very old PC like Windows 98, no, no. Uh, and we're going to attack modern systems. Well, so in this exercise, I'm going to attack Windows 8.1, uh, which will serve internet. So I will perform several spoofing attacks. So, uh, all right. First of all, uh, okay, I know this, uh, an IP address of this victim. Mm, say I don't have an IP address yet, so I will scan my subnet to do this. I'll perform a map with the uh, switch of SP SP. And my subnet is 192, 168, 1, say 124 bits. So I'm scanning my subnet to discover my victims. And of course, I will see my uh, a victim of 192, 168. Uh, one, 106 and this is uh, okay I see this is virtual machine but see in real life uh, we can discover the physical network like this one is my physical machine and uh, we will discover physical hosts and printers and switches and servers and we'll try to attack uh, physical machines as well not only virtual okay so uh, I know my victim 
other IP addresses are like my Linuxes and uh, my router and uh, my big machine, big computer, big PC. Okay, so I'm not gonna attack this PC. Let's stay, let it work like this one. Yeah. So um, first of all, uh, I want to see which websites uh, visits my victim. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, let me enable routing on this machine, CCDL. Mm. I'm just, I can just simply copy paste this command, but I want you to see how it's done by hand. So, IP version 4, capital uh, forwarding enabled. Mm. Okay, I have enabled forwarding on my Linux machine, so it can accept packets, do something with packets like patch, or just simply record and forward. Uh, the next attack is uh, ERP spoofing, ERP spoof. What's ERP spoofing? You will learn on the lecture, okay? So in case anyone knows, that's good, that's good. So uh, I will attack my victim, 192.168.1.106. And I will spoof uh, MAC addresses and IP addresses of the router and my victim, because my victim goes to the internet. And I want to see how it connects to the internet and which websites it's, it visits. So, uh, and my router IP address is 192.168.1.254. Yes, but I need to spoof it in both directions. So I'm talking KRP spoof again in another window. So the target is router. And I will spoof it to my victim, okay? Okay. Now all the traffic comes through my Kali 2 Linux machine. And when my victim will visit some website, I will see this traffic. To illustrate this, first of all, uh, I want to know what pictures does my victim see on the internet? So I'm launching DriftNet. This software will capture traffic and display all the pictures. Okay, so uh, let me navigate to say bing.com. And let me search for maybe funny pictures, funny cats. And images, and I expect Oh, 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 I expect to see those images on my hacker machine. Of course, my victim is not seeing this. It's unsuspecting. So my victim is not aware that I'm watching him. Or say, let me search my pictures, the pictures of me, okay? Just a simple. And uh, it's probably cached already, so it doesn't 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 really download from the internet. Uh, just let me check um, my browsing history. Let me clear it, and you will see. Okay, I want to see it on my. Yes, you see, it copied to Linux. So let me minimize this window of uh, my victim. And this is a hacker machine. So you see that hacker sees all the pictures and the victim downloads from the internet. Okay. Mm. So the, uh, the next exercise in this, I want to see websites like URLs and I want to capture posts and gets from the browser. So it's done with DripNet. This is it. Uh, now let me add some routing because uh, this software works on different port than 80. So I will redirect the traffic just a little bit. So this is gonna be IP tables. And 
it. I can do it like that. Is sensitive. So I'm gonna capture as on a zero and TCP protocol and uh, from port 80. Gonna redirect this port to port eighty eighty. That's it. That's good. And now uh, I will launch a completely different program, which is called um, man the middle proxy. Okay, so like this one and let me maximize this window okay so the victim continues navigating to the internet okay that's cool just open the browser and the home page opens and you see I'm performing get of new horizons dot CZ and you see the hacker sees all the requests from uh, from the victim okay okay uh, let me examine some packet is there anything interesting yeah there is something of interest to me like of course I see uh, URL that's it yeah that's it uh, but also I see the operating system which operating system is that yeah this is Windows 8.1 because this is Windows NT 6.3 and also I see that there is going to be Internet Explorer uh, version 11 well that's it this like that so now I can capture requests and responses and again my victim doesn't see that it's unaware that something happens like that uh, I can uh, capture even more so say let me search something on this website it's gonna be test 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 course I click search, search, yeah. And I bet they want to see something interesting uh, on my Linux machine. Search, okay, I can filter this one. Uh, I just uh, quickly searching for post and search. Oh, yes. Post and search, let me examine this packet. It was inside and you see that uh, I'm seeing what my written searches course it's not even like simply watching it uh, sometimes you want to patch it <laughs> you, you want to patch your request and response but this this is a completely different story uh, just for you to understand that say uh, okay the typical issue let me demonstrate this quickly quickly for you okay uh, I have the pizza service uh, here in Latvia like this one and uh, let me switch to English yes English uh, I will navigate to pizzas and uh, order some pizza like anything add to order and say my order complete order uh, I want delivery yeah that's okay I will type my name my surname uh, phone number Thus, the city of Riga, okay, and street. Uh, and home number, and even the door code, okay, okay, I will select the apartment number, and uh, apartment number, like this one, door code, like this one, I don't want to see new newsletters okay test at you know, horizons dot is that okay and I click continue and I expect I expect this traffic to be captured by hacker and let's check it uh, I haven't tested it at the moment so I will just simply search for this traffic for posts We'll navigate to, to, to this pizza. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. no. I want my post. 
approaches somewhere from the end. And I'll see this uh, information. Okay, order post. Let me check. Let me check what's inside. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So when under ordering pizza, I am exposing my personal data like name, surname, and phone number, and email, and my <laughs> address, and even door code to hackers. And uh, the victim is unsuspecting completely. Is it good or bad? You decide, okay? So it's okay with this exercise. If you have any questions, just ask me now, okay? Yes, I'll quiet this program. It's enough. And I will delete the routing. So uh, it's not enough for me. Okay, I have discovered some valuable information. I've seen all the pictures, all the gets and posts. Sometimes you can even patch it. Like uh, you want to uh, capture this traffic and update delivery address to your address. Let someone order pizza. You will receive it. This is funny. Okay, but the next exercise is uh, a little bit more, more complex and it's not about ordering pizza. I want to spoof uh, websites, say. Not, not exactly website, this is a different story. First of all, I want to spoof DNS name and forward uh, my victim to my Linux machine. Uh, to do this, I will do it just a little bit uh, more complex. I will use two Linuxes just simply because the Kali 2 Linux uh, doesn't really uh, isn't really good with DNS spoofing at the moment. Okay, so let me read my, your question. Mm. If my victim knows how to inspect who's listening at this at his network, uh, do his easy IP address? And this scenario I have demonstrated: the victim doesn't know anything and doesn't expect anything, doesn't understand he's under attack. No way. Uh, if you have some intrusion detection system, this intrusion detection system can uh, see that something happens on ERP, like uh, associations with MAC addresses and IP addresses change, and uh, someone is flooding with ERP packets, this network. Uh, also, you can mitigate this attack by configuring your, say, Cisco or Avaya or Hewlett Packard uh, managed switches say to pre-configure uh, uh, IP and Mac, Mac addresses to ports like this one yeah but again uh, this is quite questionable because again this is not like Mac spoofing in this case this ERP spoofing it's a completely different story uh, so you need some intrusion detection system installed in your network to capture uh, to, to catch the, the hacker yeah so but in this scenario it's not possible to uh, for victim it's not possible for him to know and to discover the hacker uh, say you can try to manage this uh, by using SSL yes of course of course say you see Bing exposes your pictures Google doesn't how come because Google switches to HTTP but again, this doesn't doesn't help you much because uh, let me show you this command and you will Google it yourself. SSL strip. This is quite an interesting command. Uh, like when victim tries to switch from HTTP to HTTPS connection, HTTPS connection is established with hacker, and then hacker retransmits packets with clear HTTP and that's it and uh, if you are unaware of this issue you'll just simply navigate to your website you will buy something like on eBay and you do not suspe suspect that uh, this traffic is captured yeah uh, but of course you will see that your uh, navigation bar is not protected with SSL but uh, it's not for typical uh, victim okay it's for security specialist maybe you see, when I first uh, discovered this issue with Unicode I got tricked <laughs> so this is uh, on our lectures you will do it yourself 
So I will explain this completely with pictures and everything and you will see. <laughs> That's why we need not one hour but five days uh, to see it yourself and try it yourself. So this is going to be an interesting thing. Uh, but the next exercise is uh, going to be a little bit more complex, just a little bit. So in this exercise I will execute ARP spoofing. Uh, let me stop ARP spoofing on this machine. Just simply because DNS spoofing is broken on Kali 2. They gonna patch it, but okay. So uh, I will execute the same command, ARP spoof uh, and target S 192, 168, 1, 106, and this is my victim machine and the router. You can ask if uh, you can uh, perform ARP spoofing on both machines simultaneously. No, you cannot. Not in, not in the same subnet. And also, I will execute ARP spoof uh, command for this one. Yes. Basically, you can execute multiple spoofings on the same subnet if uh, your victims are different. Like, uh, this depends on what's hack value. Uh, a lot of students consider the hack value is like uh, an administrator password, but it's not. The hack value is like money, which you can steal from eBay account, user account, from PayPal user account, or maybe some available data in database uh, this can be some good hack value. Even some uh, secret uh, Microsoft Excel document which contains some sensitive data. This is the point of interest. This is the hack value. Not necessary admin password. So it's possibly that multiple hackers will attack your subnet and say uh, you attack victim A and the internet. I attack victim B and the server. It's possible. Okay, so in this scenario, I continue attacking my uh, Windows 8.1 machine. Uh, ARP spoofing. On top of this attack, I will execute one more attack. Oh, and yes, and yes, I need to be sure that routing is enabled. So I will perform this uh, commands. This control net IP version 4 configuration now forwarding equals one yeah okay now ERP spoofing works and uh, all the traffic from my victim comes through Kali one machine uh, now let me prepare some DNS file okay I have tried to do this in here okay let, let's do it from the scratch uh, I want to redirect my victim to completely different machine uh, to Kali 2 and the Kali 2 has an IP address of if config. Let me check the IP uh, config 105. Okay, that's good. That's good. So 192, 168 to 1, 105 uh, stands for 3W New Horizons dot check. This is going to be a good one. So my victim will navigate to this website, but in fact, he will navigate to my website. Okay, I'm saving this file. Why exactly this file? Because previously, just 10 minutes ago, I have discovered that this website is the uh, homepage for my victim. So this is my favorite website in this scenario okay so I have saved this uh, file and now I will attack I will attack my victim by this command DNS spoof and the file is on my desktop and it's called dns.txt now uh, I'm listening for DNS packets and I will patch them in real time, uh, but it's not enough. Okay, I, in fact, I can test it if you want. Think 3W, New Horizons, uh, GZ. I expect uh, this address is not cached anymore. And you see this? 
guess we have uh, good resolution, screen resolution to see that this name got resolved to my Linux machine. And again, this happens with unsuspecting victim. Okay, uh, victim still is not opening the browser because I need to prepare my Metasploit. The Metasploit is quite interesting thing. It is the constructor uh, which builds viruses and exploits. And you see, it's full of exploits. It have uh, it, it does have a lot of exploits, like one half thousand of exploits. Uh, and I will use some particular one because I know my victim has some particular vulnerability in Adobe Flash Player. I like this program, this module, because uh, vulnerabilities in Adobe Flash Player are discovered every week, maybe every day. <laughs> I don't know. But there are some really funny vulnerabilities in Flash Player uh, which lead to complete remote control of victim machine. So, I will use exploit, uh, which is cross-platform from multifolder, which means this exploit works on Linux, uh, on Windows, and different operating systems, you will see. Uh, Multi-browser, this is exactly browser vulnerability, and this is going to be uh, exactly Adobe. Let me check how much uh, I have of this. I have a lot, many vulnerabilities, okay, many exploits. I will take the first one. Yeah. This is uh, not too old vulnerability. It has been published in July. It's December right now, so do you patch your systems uh, often or not? <laughs> This depends. So uh, I expect in, in this uh, vulnerability is easily exploited in the wild. But okay, I have selected the vulnerability. Now I need to configure it. Uh, show targets. You see, you can target this vulnerability on both Windows and Linux. So I will set target Windows because I know my victim. Okay, just a little bit. So next, uh, so, so server port 80. I will listen on port 80, set Europath root. I will listen on the root folder, like freewwebsite.com slash, and that's it. The next uh, is payload. Payload is my virus, which I'm gonna put through exploit. So set payload. And the payload is designed for Windows, exactly Metapreter, which is basically uh, the favorite uh, payload for penetration testing. And this is going to be reverse TCP. So this payload, this virus, Trojan, is going to connect back to my machine. So I can infect uh, hundreds of PCs, and they are going to connect back to me. And I will manage them all. Okay. So listen host, and this is IP address of my machine, of my Linux machine. Uh, so the Trojan is programmed to connect back to me. Mm, I think it's done. Exploit. So I have compiled a website which contains an exploit. So let's check it on, on victim. Let's do it. So victim connects to New Horizons and uh, Linux sending something. You see, it's sending, it's sending, sending, and session one is opened. Okay, let's check it. Let's check the session. Sessions. I see some session from CH Windows 8.1 machine from user Peter. Okay, possibly an IP address, important, uh, everything. So sessions interact one. I want to interact with the session. So now I'm working uh, inside hacked machine. Uh, okay, you see the victim still doesn't suspect anything. He's just simply opening the website. He's navigating to this URL and that's it. But I'm inside. Uh, I can request process list and I see all processes in this machine. That's cool. Uh, which process I'm into? 
get process ID. I'm into process Internet Explorer XZ. I suspect my victim will close uh, the browser. So I will move to another process. I will move to say something else, something else, which is, which is, I'm looking for Explorer XZ. You know what Explorer XZ is, and this is the start button. Okay, that's cool. 1284, migrate to 1284. I have migrated from this process. And I will kill Internet Explorer because I don't need it anymore. Okay, let me check the Internet Explorer. Uh, once again, I will kill this process. It's done, but I'm still inside. It has just opened another session, but it's okay. Uh, it's enough for me to have one session. Uh, you see, so nothing like is running on victim machine. But I'm inside. I can do whatever I want because uh, uh, let me check my user ID. This speeder get privileges, get privileges, and you see I have a lot of privileges. Uh, well, uh, now tell me if it is safe to surf web uh, with administrator privileges. Possibly, <laughs> possibly, because I can do anything. I can capture webcam. Uh, I will not do it right now because I'm running virtual machine with a physical webcam running already. But again, uh, it's possible. Just, just command webcam list. It's nothing connected at the moment to this machine. But if it was connected, I can capture and watch live video. Uh, okay, K uh, scan start. I will just start sniffer, and uh, my victim will run some I don't know chat or navigate to Internet Bank or something. He will open FreeW. And we have sweatbank.lv login uh, peer and password one two three four five six. Uh, let me check if hacker sees this. Keys can dump. Now, do you see this? So, hacker sees everything. He can capture your keystrokes, take pictures, and screenshots, and everything. Uh, but this is not hack well at the moment, of course. Uh, let me show you something about the firewall. You see, my victim. Uh, thinks that uh, he's protected with firewall. You see, the firewall is on. Uh, but uh, how come I'm able to connect? This is quite simple because the virus got connected from inside to outside. So the virus can do anything. And even you, if you have some uh, complex firewall installed or intrusion detection system installed on this PC, it doesn't really matter because I will disable it. I will find it and disable it. Let me show you how I would disable the firewall on victim machine. This is quite simple. So I will execute command. And this is going to be a command like cmd c match at the firewall current profile. This is just a command line. Nothing really special. Uh, state of. I'm not sure. Let's see. How do you see this? Uh, I think this is funny. Funny when people think that navigating uh, web uh, is safe. Uh, people think that navigating their uh, favorite websites is safe. People think that they got viruses from like porn sites. No, no, no way. Uh, in fact, I, I'd say porn websites are the most protected, <laughs> are the most safe in the internet. But usual normal websites like news uh, or magazines, 
uh, hackers spoof them and attack victims like that, like you see. Because again, I have spoofed DNS and scratched DNS resolution, and then uh, <coughs> I have uh, managed to connect this victim to my Linux machine and exploit the vulnerability in victim machine, and that's it. So this is funny. Then I have disabled firewall, disabled antivirus. I have disabled anything I want because I have enough privileges. Okay, say you don't have admin privileges on hacked machine. Is it okay? Guess no. Uh, on uh, on the lecture you will see how to uh, escalate privileges. But in, for this webinar I will uh, show you something you already know. Upload. I will upload something. I have prepared my executable. CDBXE, which is just just a file uh, <laughs> which you already know and I will execute it oh you know what let me upload it to the desktop for you to see it on the desktop so I'm changing directory mm, I will navigate to the folder like this one to the home folder like this one and I will upload the same executable uh, and you will see it will appear uh, like Microsoft Word. But anyway, I will execute it right now. Execute file splash cdb dot exe. <laughs> and guess what? To do this, you don't need uh, any administrative privileges. It works with normal user. And to get infected and to lose all your data. Uh, it, it's enough just to simply navigate to your favorite website to read news and that's it and this is funny okay so I can kill this process so uh, you know what this exercise is done it's enough to show you <laughs> the power of hacking yeah? uh, I want to present you something next which is uh, to describe the uh, certified ethical hacker course version 9 what's inside uh, I will show you my uh, folder with materials you will see well courseware I'm not permitted to show you everything on this but this is the electronic material of uh, CH version 9 and let me show you some part of it like this one I have just uh, opened this PDF one of the modules and it looks like a book it is book it presents you some slight and detailed explanation of this attack scenario say uh, let me magnify this just in a little bit different way like this one and this book explains how to attack by using, say, a session fixation attack in this scenario. Yeah. Uh, do you see the screen? I guess you see. Yeah. And so the uh, book looks like that. It describes different concepts of uh, network hacking and explains everything in details. And uh, also we have labs and lab book looks like this in lab files you're instructed like what to launch what to configure what to check and what result would you get and how to find packets like in this scenario we capture the traffic by using Wireshark and extracting some valuable data from the traffic yeah that's it and perform sniffing uh, so this is how uh, labs look like uh, I'd say uh, in total there are 4,000 of pages it's not 400 it's 4,000 of pages this is huge big material and very interesting one uh, <laughs> of course we will not manage to cover everything in five days in five days I will show you my best 
I will show you how I do attack systems and you will see it, okay? Uh, and also you will have a lot of material to learn, to try at home, to install and to read about, of course. So this is how it looks like. So I like it a lot. Of course, this is just simply the very first step, the very first course of security professional. But this is like that. And we're going to learn about footprinting, how to discover information about your victim, how to scan the network, scan ports, and discover what services are behind ports, how to enumerate user accounts and shares and services, how to perform system hacking, how to infiltrate with your virus, and how to sniff traffic. You just saw it. And also say how to hack, uh, how to hack web servers, how to hack SQL servers by using SQL injection attack. Uh, and also they have added a little bit more. In now in uh, version nine, they have hacking mobile platforms, which is Android. And also they have added the hacking of Linux platforms uh, and also cloud computing. Just a little bit of interest, yeah, as well. And detailed explanation how cryptography works. Like, uh, what are digital certificates, what are certification authorities, and so on. So this is going to be an interesting thing. And also, uh, almost all modules have their labs prepared. Okay, so the labs, lab materials like this one. A lot of pages. I'd say two and a half thousand of lectures and uh, pages of lectures and one half thousand of uh, lab work uh, by the end of the course uh, i have prepared for you the test the exam and this exam you will be presented some hidden environment with multiple virtual machines and you will need to hack them it's not like real exam real exam is a test test uh, but this is a hard one they, they present you 150 questions and they give you four hours to perform this test it's not uh, the worst scenario it's quite easy for me and guess for you as well <laughs> but say the test I have prepared for you my assessment gonna be uh, funny as well because you will need to show me, to present me some real result of your hacking. Well, now I'm ready for questions. If any, of course. And comments. We still have some time, like 5 to 10 minutes. Please think a little bit. Maybe you want to tell me something. You can uh, talk by microphone or just type some message, it's okay. Good presentations. Uh, thank you very much. Say, uh, this is how we will do our course. We're gonna hack, hack, hack. You know, a lot of students consider this to be really complex and a hard one. But again, previously, uh, we've done CAH version 8 and it was only uh, 100, uh, 1,700 pages, 1,700 pages for CAH version 8 and now it's 4,000 pages for CAH version 9. And yeah, students were excited by uh, how uh, much of material was previously. But beginning uh, 2016, oh, we gonna do it even harder, even more interesting, I suspect, I guess. In fact, I think that uh, possibly we will move our test, our assessment to some Saturday, possibly. I don't know. This depends all on Mirosov as well, <laughs> because uh, we want to have a lot of time for training and then uh, say four hours for exam.
it's gonna be good experience. Uh, any more question? Come on, just ask anything. <laughs> we are online. Okay, uh, still I will wait a little bit for questions uh, and expect you to tell me something, okay? Maybe Miroslav has something to tell. Yes, thank you, Peter. Thank you, it was an uh, excellent presentation, I hope, and interesting. Uh, thank you, guys, for, for listening. I'm going to <clears throat> present the rest of my presentation. I promise that it will be not uh, very boring. Uh, maybe maybe start to uh, to add something from my uh, more business view on uh, uh, ethical hacking at the course and uh, what are the benefits. What I think that. Uh, what Peter explained in very good uh, view is uh, how we approach uh, to uh, teaching or to train uh, how hackers are approaching uh, systems and <clears throat> and uh, this course is uh, focusing on this practical part. But I can add that uh, after after completing your FIDO training, uh, you are. Uh, automatically uh, have access to uh, security uh, a security community uh, which is organized by EC Council and you can share a lot of uh, another resources materials ideas you can share ideas and uh, experiences with other security guys so that means that uh, this is uh, just this training and certificate is uh, entry uh, event uh, to to the huge and uh, rich uh, community <coughs> of uh, security experts and you can share your experiences your knowledge your competencies with others and uh, growth uh, your value and uh, your expertise Okay, uh, let me let me present uh, some uh, I hope uh, useful and uh, relevant information. You uh, maybe uh, if you know them, uh, you can better uh, feel and uh, uh, see uh, new horizons. Uh, what does it mean and what uh, what value uh, can we provide you? First, <clears throat> uh, New Horizons is the largest global computer training provider. Uh, we are a uh, seventh year in a row member of the top 20 training companies and uh, New Horizons uh, Czech and Slovak uh, branch is active in both Czech Republic and Slovakia. Uh, what we are uh, different from our competitors, uh, we are providing largest guarantee to run course schedule while our courses are delivered uh, via different ways of delivery. We are providing training as classroom, traditional classroom training or uh, advanced <coughs> or modern or uh, virtual classroom training. We call this online life. It is interactive live training delivered uh, through internet in virtual classroom or remote mentor learning. Um, I don't want to to waste your time by explaining deeply what does it mean, but uh, if somebody uh, somebody is interested, I am happy to provide information. What kind of trainings uh, we are providing? Uh, as a leader in the industry, we are training partner for partner for uh, industry leaders such as Microsoft, IBM, Cisco, VMware, SAP, CompTIA, IC Council, and much more. For example, for Microsoft, New Horizons is uh, training. <coughs> Uh, learning uh, uh, solution partner delivering more than 40 percent, 40 percent, all training, max technical training worldwide. So we are really uh, very, very, uh, very, very uh, strong uh, company. And uh, what we are winning, uh, what is the, the differentiator we are winning in our customers is the quality and the value we are delivering. 
Let's say more in more details uh, about upcoming training, uh, which will be led by Peter. I am uh, very happy to present you that New Horizons first in Prague, in Czech Republic, in Slovakia, uh, first uh, scheduled, uh, which uh, has scheduled uh, the newest uh, hot <laughs> new version 9 uh, ethical hacking uh, uh, training. And uh, we have scheduled uh, our first class in uh, first week in uh, February 2016. So the name is uh, new EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker Version 9, FIDU training led by Peter, classroom training in English, uh, and date is February 1st to 5th, sorry for mistake. I, I can stay longer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because you no, say seriously, for exam, we <laughs> probably need one more day. <laughs> yes. You will, you will stay uh, till Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enrollment deadline is uh, Friday, January 15, or um, till a date uh, when all seats are sell out. Um, I would like to present uh, this pre-last pre uh, 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 picture or, or, or uh, slide. Uh, the benefits uh, we prepared for uh, those who plan and uh, to enroll uh, at CH uh, nine class uh, delivered in February. First of all, I would like to to, to tell you that uh, we decided for year 2016 <clears throat> to to set uh, our list price uh, to 55,900 uh, Czech crowns or 2,000 euro which is uh, the best price, the best least price of training in Prague and Bratislava. And in, it, within this price, uh, we, we are including or we included uh, all authorized uh, learning resources, I mean five day uh, registration to five day uh, classroom training <clears throat> with authorized uh, courseware and uh, labs in total 4,000 uh, pages, and uh, exam voucher, uh, valid for 12 months from training start. Uh, and exam is, uh, can be, can be uh, taken at uh, New Horizons Prague. <clears throat> uh, this is basic, uh, basic package. Uh, uh, each uh, authorized, uh, EC Council authorized training center uh, can provide or should provide. Uh, what we are providing above uh, this is a very nice and uh, successful trainer, Peter Gubarevich. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we delivered um, uh, over seven years uh, quite a lot of uh, classrooms, and uh, we are happy that all uh, students attended the exam that they passed. So that's the same last two years when, uh, where we are uh, collaborating with Peter. All students attended uh, CH exam passed. So it means that uh, they were prepared very good for their exams. And that is one of the objective to attend the <coughs> uh, classroom uh, or CH class. But and, this is uh, a so big, big uh, work. And this depends <laughs> on you, of course. Not yes, <laughs> but but no. but instructor as you, Peter, can uh, can uh, you know uh, motivate uh, students uh, to overcome these big big <laughs> obstacles and work. <laughs> uh, I can tell something for students about this. Um, say, even I'm working in the industry a lot of years without certificates. I have worked without, but uh, when I have passed my first exam. I have discovered new possibilities, uh, a lot of opportunities, just simply after the very first exam. And especially after passing the hacker exam, I have discovered completely new world of opportunities. So think about this, this is important. Thank you. So this is first benefit, uh, I, I am talking about Peter as a trainer. Second benefit about basic package is uh, New Horizons as the only training center is providing free retake. That means that uh, you have option to attend the same authorized training 
Uh, one more known fee is uh, <coughs> needed to pay uh, a second time. Uh, and last one, uh, for those enrolled in the upcoming uh, training, uh, we have prepared a technical gift value of $40 uh, and will be they were delivered on Monday morning when you come to our classroom. So those, those, uh, those uh, uh, four uh, benefits mean uh, the best uh, list price, uh, excellent trainer, free retake and tech gift is <clears throat> something uh, we are providing you as the, the value and, and hope that you think about this proposal and uh, enroll for our upcoming ethical hacking training today, tomorrow or or soon before Christmas holiday and to secure your seat. If you have any questions regarding training, <clears throat> regarding uh, <clears throat> uh, hacking uh, examples uh, or any, any, any question, please put them. Thank you for your time listening my presentation and your questions. Okay, Miroslav, there is a question for someone who has attended uh, version yes. 8, for, for if he is permitted to attend version 9. Yes, it is possible, Lubo. The only, the only, uh, yes, I, I need to tell you that uh, free retake means that you can attend physically as, as a student, you can attend uh, training uh, and we are providing no uh, course material, no access to labs uh, because uh, expect uh, you have access to uh, your uh, own courseware and labs. But I think that we can solve this situation. Uh, we can, we can, uh, we can. Uh, if you are interested, uh, we can discuss about this and find uh, a solution how to uh, access a new version of uh, CEH. I mean, we we can buy your courseware and uh, sell you uh, without any margin for New Horizons if you would be interested in. Thank you. I say, I'd say this is good to offer because new materials completely changed. Now there is some serious book uh, about this course, not just simply slides. And uh, they have changed a lot of uh, practical uh, work, like uh, say at least a half of laboratory uh, exercise have changed and they have updated to the latest uh, threats like uh, Poodle uh, or it was like uh, SSL attacks. I like it. Okay, more oh. questions now? Okay. okay, if not, I start uh, thinking, th thinking and uh, then uh, pass to you, Peter, if you uh, agree. Thank you guys for attending this, uh, this webinar. I hope that uh, the objective was met and uh, you were able to, to get experiences and feeling from Peter and how he is delivering uh, this uh, extraordinary uh, training, uh, practical training. and. Uh, as uh, Peter uh, mentioned in the start, I would like to, to tell you that <clears throat> all, all the webinar was uh, recorded, so we prepare and send you no later than uh, tomorrow in the morning a link to, <clears throat> to video. Uh, you can go through uh, all the webinar once more. And uh, we will contact you with in more detailed information about uh, upcoming uh, <coughs> certified ethical hacking uh, training, classroom training, and discuss if we can do something together and meet, uh, meet you or welcome you in Prague on uh, February 1st at uh, classroom. Thank you. And uh, Peter, your turn. <coughs> <laughs> I'm done. It's okay. Just once again. 
I will show you uh, everything I know uh, and you will need to learn hard, really hard. Uh, because 4,000 pages. As usually. <laughs> yes, usually, yeah. But also the good news, like, I have tried to pass an exam uh, recently, just one week ago. I have tried to pass an exam and I passed it uh, successfully. Uh, I've noticed uh, not a lot uh, of something changed. So I expect uh, this going to be... Uh, not as hard to pass this exam for uh, someone who has attended uh, version 8. That's it. Uh, that's it for today. Just uh, guess to see you. I hope to see you in February in Prague. That's it. So, thank you. I'm stopping uh, recording. See you later. See you. Bye. Bye.